Hello, and welcome to Downtown. I'm your host, Robbie Haig. Thank you for being with us once again. And today I am speaking with Joanne Lamoth from the Sandwich Library. Thank you very much for giving us some time, Joanne. And thank you for having me, Robbie. It's a pleasure. So, um, I don't know much of the background about uh, Sandwich since I live off Cape. So tell me about the Sandwich Library. The Sandwich Public Library, which um, our tagline is the heart of the community, which it certainly is. And we are located on Main Street, right in the heart of Sandwich Village, directly across the street from the Daniel Webster oh, Inn, yes. which is a lovely, um, certainly a lovely spot um, that people stroll by all the time and, and drop in and, and discover all the wonderful things that we do inside the library. Excellent. And I love your giant. Oh, our, yes, uh, our, I just our love reading it. power giant. I, yeah. love, I love when the giants go up. It's such a great thing for sandwich. What a great That's tradition. Good. Yeah. Yeah. And it's almost time for them to go up. It is. Not? I know. Time flies. It certainly does. So how long have you been doing what you're doing at the um, Sandwich Public Library? I've been the director at in Sandwich for um, nine and a half years. The time has flown because it's such a, you know, a great job and a great community to work in, Wonderful. a great library and a great staff. But um, I actually began my career in banking. Very when I when I was out of college, um, but um, I worked for a very small bank that was going to be sold, and we had a wonderful sort of family-like atmosphere at the bank. And my husband said to me, "You know, why don't you just sort of take a break? You've been working since you were sort of 16, and and see what you want to do." And so we didn't have any children at the time, and that lasted about two days, and I was climbing the walls. <laughs> And um, I live in Duxbury, and there was a little tiny ad in the Duxbury Clipper looking for part-time help at the um, Duxbury Free Library. And I thought, oh, that might be interesting because I've been, I've always been a voracious reader yes. since I was tiny. And kind of the irony of it was um, I grew up in Franklin, Massachusetts. And if you drive to Franklin on the boundary of town, there are these lovely signs and it says Franklin home of America's first public library so wow, I think maybe it was meant nice. to be yes, and um, Franklin's a lovely town. it is a lovely town it was a great place to grow up and I frequented that library all the time I would walk all the time and and remember you know the joy I felt when I had exhausted all the titles in the children's room and I was allowed to go upstairs <laughs> which was a big thing back in the day oh. So I started out in Duxbury um, part-time in what's called in the library world technical services. So that's where we receive the new materials and process them. And I had a wonderful um, librarian um, who worked with me who sort of took me under her wing and um, was you know, a, a mentor to me. And she encouraged me to keep going. And so progressively I moved up from part-time to full-time to reference librarian to head of reference and technical services and then I was appointed director of the library and at the same time we had just received a state construction grant to build a new library in Duxbury so I had the, the pleasure of overseeing that project. Wonderful. And so I, you really went from the bottom up. I just I, which, which is great when you're in administration because you have a taste of how everything works and what it's like to work in a position like that, which I think is great for, um, you know, when you're working with staff, that you understand what they've done in the processes and, and how the whole system works because it's very integrated. Yeah. Um, I and stayed. More to it than most oh, people it's, think it's, of. It, it's certainly it's not just putting a book on the shelf. Mm. Um, and so. Then um, I left Duxbury and I became the director of the Weymouth Public Libraries, which was a much larger job with four buildings, a very large staff, a more urban setting. Um, and one of the reasons that I went there is they were interested in building a new library as well. And I had also been doing some library building consulting. So um, you spent a lot of time in Weymouth. 
So I spent a lot of time in Weymouth and then um, was fortunate enough to come down to, um, to Sandwich, which is uh, a terrific place to be. It is. Went from the place where the first library came into existence to the largest town on the Cape. The oldest, and certainly the, the oldest, oldest, the oldest town on the Cape. Absolutely, too, so very rich in history. Very good. So uh, I don't really know a great deal about libraries, even though I have been associated with the one in Plymouth. But mm -hmm. it's a different sort of uh, library where the, the Sandwich Library is basically run by the town, is that? It, it's a municipal department, yes, and funded by the town as funded well. Funded by yes. the town, yeah, not run by, I didn't, right. that, that was a misnomer. No, that's Thank fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, it's only the town that you have to make happy, the, the town oh, people. And, and, and our users. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So, um, do you have a large staff that? We have a, um, a, I mean, for, for the size of the community, we have a staff of approximately 17, and that includes full-time oh. and part-time people. Um, That's very good. We are open Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 9.30 until 8.30 at night, Fridays and Saturdays from 9.30 till 4, and we just recently um, commenced our Sunday hours again. So we opened from oh noon to God. four o'clock on Sundays from October through the end of April. So That's a Sunday right. afternoon, I mean, it's a wonderful place to spend some time on a, on a Sunday afternoon when the Patriots aren't playing. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. Very good. The, um, yeah, the, so are you obviously busier during the uh, school time as opposed to uh, summertime? We are very busy during the summer. That is our busiest time. Really? And even though Sandwich has um, the largest year-round population, so it's not like some of the other Cape Towns that really get the influx of the summer visitor. Okay. But we do um, some amazing events and programs in the summer that I'll, I'll talk about in a minute. But um, you know, many, there are a lot of snowbirds in Sandwich, so they come back, and then we do get uh, people who are staying for the summer, and we do get a lot of tourists that use, utilize the library as well. Isn't so. that great? But we do a massive um, summer reading program for children during the summer, which we do um, let kids track their reading. We don't do it competitively, and we do an incredible series of all kinds of events that include musicians and science programs and, and all kinds of enrichment things, family programs, concerts. We've Excellent. done DJ, DJ dance party out in the parking lot. And really? So yeah, so it's, it, it's not the library of days of old where we walk around shushing because probably the librarians there and when we do some of these events are probably the noisiest people. <laughs> so. How wonderful. Yes. Yeah. And you're, it's very true. It's not <coughs> any library is not the your mother's, your grandmother's. Oh, no, library. no, no, no. In fact, I spend a lot of time, you know, sort of smashing the stereotype of the, <laughs> of the library. And when I see it, you know, per, sort of portrayed in the movies, I, no, that's not the way it is. We have fun. We're outgoing. We're, you know. Excellent. Yeah. And fun is what it's right. all about. It is. Yeah. It is. So, uh, um, could you give me an idea of how you go about getting the new books into the library? So, um, as librarians, um, you know, our, our goal is, we have a number of goals when it comes to what we call collection development, of what, what materials do we add to the collection. So certainly we want to meet the needs of um, our users, and that could be recreational, that, you know, people enjoy reading a bestseller by John Grisham or James Patterson. And we also look at what our um, current trends, be it in politics or health or science or medical, and continue to keep the, um, the collection up, updated that way. And one of the most important things about libraries, and I don't think people really consider this a lot, is you know we are sort of represent the best that we can be as far as a democracy. Um, Okay. So we make it a point that we provide both sides of an issue. 
Good. That we don't take a stand on anything. We make it, we make sure that our collection doesn't reflect one political view um, or one opinion, but that we balance it. Um, because we, you know, we're a center for lifelong learning. Excellent. And we're the people's university. So um, I think that that's one of the most important things about a public library today. Um, we are adamant about censorship. Um, you know, we may have some materials in the library that people find that are unpopular mm -hmm. because they may not be their viewpoint, but, you know, we will, we'll, we will stand hard and fast to ensure that we do have those materials available. That's complimentary yeah. because we all have different ways of thinking about right, right, different things. Right, right. Very good. Now, uh, is there a means of sharing between the libraries? Like, do you cover all and everything? Or, or do well, you? we can't for a number of reasons. You know, certainly budgetary constraints because there are, you know, a bajillion books published a year. And, and not just books. We'll, you know, touch a little bit on some of the other materials that we offer. Um, and, and certainly we have space constraints. True. But one of the most magnificent things that happened in how libraries work in, in the last 30 years is we made it a point to do resource sharing. So Excellent. back in olden times, when you had your little paper library card and you went to your library, you pretty much could only borrow what's in the collection. And once technology came along and we were able to automate library services, libraries joined together in library networks. And if you now have a library card, it's not specific to your home library, so for instance, the Sandwich Public Library belongs to the Old Colony Library Network, and we have 28 libraries. Amazing. That are part. So you essentially are a card holder for all of those libraries. Wonderful. And there are large ones and there are small ones. Um, in addition to that, we have a couple of academic libraries in, in the network. And then we can expand even further because through state funding, through the Board of Library Commissioners, we now have what's called the Commonwealth Catalog. So essentially you can search every library in the Commonwealth. Wow. And then it even expands further that, you know, it's not, it's not unusual for us to get a book for a library patron from the Midwest. It might be specific really? to something that, you know, an artist who's there or a history of that local, um, that local community. Very and the wonderful thing is that we have a means of delivery. So every day we get, our patrons see it, that um, a van pulls up and out come bins of books and books are just constantly traveling all over the state. So Robbie, if you came in today and said, you know, I'm looking for a book on Creole cooking and you searched our library catalog and you found it and you said, oh, but it's, you know, it's in Walpole, yeah. then we place a hold for you and the, through the magic of technology, the staff in Walpole goes to their shelf and they pull it off and they put it in the delivery bin and it's in your hands in about two days. Isn't that amazing? So, it really is. It really is. It's kind is. of like yeah. taking a leaf from the, uh, uh, excuse me, the post office. It is. It is. Yeah. It's where you know. Yeah. Everybody's busy all the time. Yeah. I. That's absolutely fantastic. Now, uh, uh, with the books that are coming in, do people? Um, I'm trying to get at how you know what books are coming up or that you're going to be bringing in. And do people come to you, say like someone in the area who has written a book, mm -hmm. will they come to you and say, is it possible for us to add this to, your, to our library? They will, and that's sort of another phenomenon that's happened in you know, the fairly recent past is what's called um, vanity publishing. So um, pretty much anybody can write a book. They can self-publish a book if, they, if uh -huh. they haven't gone through the process of, you know, they have, um, they've sent the book out to some of the ma major American publishers who choose to accept it and they have an editor, but, um, you know, through Amazon and through a bunch of other services too, is you can actually have a concept, write your book, and have it put into print. But that's a wonderful thing, too, but we are also critical as to the quality of materials that we add to the library. Very good. 
so we have a pretty strict criteria if if you are not a mainstream author because we base a lot of, of our selection on reviews of books. Okay. So we want to make sure that the sub that subject that you're writing about, um, that you're knowledgeable about it, that the writing is good and, you know. Sure. But we do, ac we do accept a lot of vanity, um, particularly if it's, if it's local interest. So it, it takes sure. place in Sandwich or in Cape Cod or. Very good. And I've, I've heard in the past couple of years there, there are, in our midst, there are many people who do children's books. Yes. Yeah. Which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, coming back to the child in all of us. Right. Yeah. But we also, um, we spend an awful lot of time on, um, on selection criteria and reviewing books. So. It, it, you know, it's, it's sort of a no-brainer that we're going to just automatically order, you know, and add to our collection Danielle Steele or John Grisham or James Patterson and the real mainstream authors. Um, but, you know, there are, there are authors who aren't as, um, I guess, prolific. Um, okay. And so we have a number of professional review journals that we use because we are ordering books um, probably four or five months before they're actually published. And that's to ensure that, um, you know, so we're a leap ahead of our patrons. Good. So we're making sure that um, we're going to have that book on the day that it is released. And because of um, our integrated library system, too, is when we order a book, for example, that isn't going to be published until December or January, it automatically goes into our catalog, which wow. we're not flipping through cards anymore. Um, and so you, as a, you can say, oh, I, I really love this author, John Smith, and he's coming out with a new mystery, and you can actually place a hold on it oh, very good. well in advance of it being published. Very good. Well, a, and you're answering a question for me that I didn't even realize I had, but when you're listening to the news in the morning and they say, oh, I've read this book, it's coming out tomorrow. Well, if it's coming out tomorrow, how did you read it already? <laughs> well, it, I, I mean, so in, in even as a professional librarian, which it, it's kind of funny with my friends, because it, it, when you're a librarian, your friends always say, oh, you got any good reading? What are you right. reading now? Yeah. So I'm on a program where I'm actually, I receive pre-published books, so they're not available to the general public yet. So I love okay. saying to my friends, I'm reading this great book, but you can't. Oh, okay. You can read it so, in April. Very good. So, so that's how that happens. But, um, and it, it's been terrific lately too. Um, there, are, there are so many celebrities that, re that have book selections. So we have um, Jenna Bush Hager has a book club, and Reese Witherspoon has, and Sarah Jessica Parker has wow. too. And so when they're on the mainstream, um, you know, talk shows, and they're talking, I love this book, and we'll automatically see all of a sudden we'll have 15 holes on it. Very good. Which is a great thing. And you don't have to go on the mainstream talk shows to learn about the books no, that are coming no, out. No, no, because chances are we already have it. So we're, we, we try to stay five steps ahead of everybody else. So. Excellent. Yeah. So how is everything going with, I know there's a, I'll say resurgence, but it's really book clubs are like going, taking over. Oh yeah, the they entire are. Population. I mean, there's such a variety of them too. Right. So, um, we actually have a library-sponsored book club that meets once a week on on Wednesday afternoons. Uh, it's a wonderful bunch of people. They've been together for a long time, and um, just recently too is um, they did a movie date. So they had read a book, and then a film had been released based oh. on. The book, and so they say, oh, "Let's all go see the film, and then we'll talk about did we like the book better than the movie." And how fun! So it's you know, it, it's not only um, a gathering of people that have read the same book to to sort of discuss that topic. It's it's social and it's interaction, right? Which is a really important facet of what today's public library is. You know, there's a there's a lot of discussion about obsolescence in libraries. Like nobody need you know, we have the internet and. You know, I can buy my books from Amazon and I can get all this stuff, but um, I really feel the public library today sort of fills that need of community gathering space and social interaction yes. because I find, you know, we're more and more isolated. Um, 
that we tend to always have a device in front of us and we're not interacting and we're shopping online and um, kind yeah. of staying. So, you know. The, and with it, that phone in hand, changes a lot of the world. It does. But on the other hand, so, so we've been talking a lot about books. And one of the most interesting things that's happened in the last few years in the library, and it's, it's a challenge and it's an opportunity as well, are the number of patrons that we serve who never cross our threshold. Wow. Because what we now have is a plethora of downloadable content. Yes. So you can go to our um, Old Colony Library catalog or get to it via our website and search for a particular title and download it wow. to your device. That's amazing. So through the Old Colony Library Network, we offer Overdrive, which is downloadable content, which are downloadable audiobooks, downloadable ebooks. We have another product that's called Hoopla that offers not only books and ebooks, but movies and music and TV shows. And next week, we're going to be launching a product that's called Canopy, which is another service that will um, allow our library patrons to, to download films and also a series of what are called the great courses. So you can actually take an enrichment course. Wow. And it's just, it's absolutely incredible. And so when, in the public library world, when downloadable content was first um, being made available to people, we saw a, you know, an incredible spike because it was something new. Right. And it's starting to level off with, you know, a, li a little bit of growth curve as, as new people um, become interested in it and know that it's available. But we certainly, we still have our traditional print as wow. well. So. I like the traditional print. Mm -hmm. I like to hold a book in my hands. But I know a lot of people who download and they, mm -hmm. you know, they... Yeah, it, it, you it. know, it's a matter yeah. of preference. I like both depending on where I am. Right at the moment and uh -huh. but I, you know and I, I do love um, downloadable um, audiobooks because before we had that advancement in the technology if you listen to an audiobook you had a stack you know it came in a case of maybe 18 CDs and right. one CD would yes. finish and you'd be driving on the mass pike and you'd have to put the next <laughs> one in and you know this is just seamless so yeah. and, and it's so funny too that a lot of people um, because of the technology is they can download an audiobook to their phone and they pop in in their vacuuming and they're cooking and they're cleaning and they're walking and it's great. Absolutely it's a great amazing. Thing. Yeah, truly, it really is. Truly amazing. So the um, how is your library doing uh, space-wise? Well, it's interesting that you should ask because um, as I mentioned before with library as community and as gathering space, that um, we are finding more and more, and with our resource sharing, that we are less of a warehouse for books, that okay. we, then um, we, we have a great need to provide space where people can come in independently to work. There are a lot of entrepreneurs, there are a lot of work at home, telecommuter people in Sandwich. Um, and we find that they like to come into the library and be able to do their work, take advantage of our Wi-Fi, take advantage of our printers and our scanners and some of the, the technology, and yet have people around so that there's not that isolation. Yeah. So um, we are on October 28th, um, there is a special town meeting and we are um, working right now on a project <coughs> excuse me where we're going to renovate the entire interior of the library okay. to make additional meeting space to make quiet areas for study um, we're going to be make, making major changes to our children's room and the other thing that we have which is is a bit unique about the sandwich public library is we house the sandwich archives ah. and so we're going to be making some major improvements um, to that very unique collection very good. So we're hoping for a, um, we um, have been reaching out to the community, a lot of marketing, a lot of uh, information se sessions. The trustees have done a, a terrific job in getting the word out there. Um, and Article 1 at town meeting is going to bundle us with a new center for active living. 
Oh, which is very interesting. It's it's interesting in that both projects really speak to the quality of life. Is how can we make Sandwich a better community by providing services that not only the, the library does, but also uh, the Council on Aging. Excellent. So it's very exciting. Really exciting. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. Well, in Plymouth, the Council on Aging, or the Center for Active Living, uh, and the newest high school are basically on the same property, and wonderful things mm -hmm. have been happening between the two. Right. So, and it's tantamount to having a library next door. And it, it, that, that sort of new model sort of follows the model that public libraries have had because we serve everybody. We do an infant toddler story time. So yes. our user base starts from birth all the way through. Excellent. And it's terrific, again, you know, it, it's not like, um, you know, when, when, I was, when I was a kid and, and my family comes from South Boston and Dorchester and Three Deckers and all family members live there and, you know, you don't have that so much. So yeah. it's, it's nice for kids if their grandparents don't live nearby that they are interacting with, with older people and vice versa because we all learn from one another. And I'm also impressed that you're open Saturday and Sunday yes. because yeah. that's mm -hmm. community time with everybody. Correct. Everybody's Correct. available. Yeah. So it's uh, it's good. It's kind of sort of like um, the the you know we have grandparents taking care of their grandchildren right, now, right, and, right. and there's uh, just togetherness. Mm -hmm. is, it does take a community. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing too is what we've seen in in story hours because um, we very often in a story hour you will see a grandparent caregiver or you might see a nanny bringing a child in, or you'll see a dad, because um, there are an awful lot of stay-at-home dads, right. you know, a lot of different things. And what's yeah. nice about it is we're not only providing, um, you know, sort of social and literacy opportunities for kids, but networking. Um, we've seen through the years, too, you know, a, a young family moves to town and mom is bringing the kids to story hour and she doesn't really know anybody. Well, that's her way. And, you know, the yes. story hour isn't just for the kids, it's also to enable families to meet. Excellent. And friendships to develop. Excellent. And you mentioned literacy. Do you have a liter literacy program at the library? We don't because actually Plymouth um, has such an outstanding one that, again, it's resource sharing that we're, we're able to refer people to the Plymouth program. Yes. And I've been part of the Plymouth program, and I've just been taken with it. It's oh, just, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a magnificent, it's unbelievable. magnificent program to and have. And the numbers yeah. of people who don't know it's right. there, don't know it's happening. Right. Well, again, you know, it, it's sort of smashing the stereotype of what a public library is. It's not a building right. full of books, but, you know, we provide a lot of social services. Yes. And when you talk about literacy, um, when you talk about helping people where English is not their first language, or you talk about someone trying to navigate um, citizenship, or even to the point of someone applying for a job who doesn't have um, technology skills, you know, we, we still have a major right. digital divide. It's, it's, people think that, you know, we all have home computers and laptops and iPhones, and there are many people that just do not have internet service in the home and we provide wow. it. And even commerce has developed that if you want to apply for a job at Stop and Shop or Walmart or CVS, you need to apply online. And so if you don't have internet or you don't have the hardware to do that or you don't have the skill set, then we are the place to come. So, you know, we're helping people in, in numerous ways to navigate life, right? Um, legal referral, medical referral, uh, all kinds, of, all kinds just, of things. It's just a yeah. hub. And to think that back when these innovations were coming up, there were many people who thought the libraries would go defunct. That's right. Not happening. That's right. Not happening. It hasn't happened. If anything, um, we still play a very, very prominent role. So, so even you know, with the advent of technology, there are so many devices and there are so many different skill sets, yes. and there are so many people that I, you know, my my kids gave me this iPad because they want me to do something called FaceTime, and I don't know <laughs> how to do it, and so they come, you know, they come to us. Yes, and we 
the public are very appreciative that we have librarians who can keep up with the it's exhausting the some days. <laughs> it's exhausting. I bet it is, but you're doing a great job, and it's fun. You're making life fun, and together, really there's is, nothing yeah. wrong with togetherness. Yeah. So. It's you know it it's such um, it's such a rewarding career. Excellent. Uh, aside from you know no day is ever the same, but you know there's pride when you know that you've made someone happy or you've helped someone or you know yeah. and I am so fortunate I am surrounded by the best library staff in the universe I love it they are absolutely incredible love um, a few years back we embarked on a, a long-range planning strategy and a lot of the survey responses said the best asset the Sandwich Public Library has. Now we're in a beautiful setting, we're well supported, we have a great collection, but there were a fantastic. lot of people who said is the staff. Isn't that fantastic? I mean, I, ha I have staff that we keep jumper cables and we have had on occasion <laughs> someone's battery has died and they go out and jump that's someone's wonderful. car. I mean, that's You're going... You're doing the community thing. I you mean, are. But it's going above and, be and beyond. Excellent. Um, and they're Thank a group you. of people that really respect and enjoy being with each other every day, which is how you can't ask for anything better. Well, I'm I kind of gushing you. about my gush, job. Gush, <laughs> I love gushing. And I thank you so much for spending time thank here. Thank you. And talking this with has us been about great. It. So yes. I have, um, I want to encourage everyone to come to the library. Your library card is free. We are happy to go on and on and on about the wonderful things that, you know, we have. You can uh, download magazines and movies and, you know, happy to help you with anything. There's and no I have end. a little story. I have no. a little tiny story that happened yesterday. Okay. So yesterday in the mail, I got this beautiful envelope, and it was addressed to the library. Um, and I opened it up, and I said, wow, you know, somebody actually made this envelope. Beautiful gold and sort of peacock feather colors. And I opened it up, and there was a handwritten note, and it said, Dear Sandwich Library, thank you for mailing my library card back to me. It's the most important card in my wallet. Love, Nestor from Weymouth. I love so. it. It's a great note to end it on, is. Joanne. It is. It is. It's been a pleasure having you here. Thank you. And uh, maybe we can do this again. Well, we have plenty more to talk about when plenty it comes to public to libraries. Talk about. Thank you again. Thank you, and thank you out there for being part of this. We're always happy that you share your time with us. This is your host, Robbie Haig, for Downtown. We hope to see you again real soon.